In this lesson, we're going to be talking about the spiritual discipline of praise. The discipline of praise is one of six steps that we take to learn how in our lives to live in the presence of God. The first step we have already discussed, which is meditation. Praise is the next step, followed by thanksgiving, confession, petition, and practicing the presence of God throughout the day. The number one secret to effective prayer is this. Know who it is you are talking to. Remembering what God has done is important, and we will discuss that in the next step. But before we get there, it's important to focus our attention on him first. Think of prayer as if you were coming into the presence of a great king, because that is actually what you are doing. Don't just rush in the door, knocking over the guards, and say, Hey, king, how's it going? You first of all have to recognize to whom you're speaking, that this is not an ordinary person. Or thinking of it, think of it this way, like picking up a girl on the first date. You start by admiring her, paying attention to her. Admiration is important. You don't just honk your horn and say, hey, get in the car. Sometimes it's hard for us to remember that the God we cannot see is greater than anybody that we can see. And for that reason, we need to spend a great deal of time in prayer, rehearsing in our minds before him just who we understand him to be. Now, praise is not a formality. It's a vital part of establishing a relationship to God. Praise is celebrating who God is before we celebrate what he has done. Think about who he is before we think about the things he's done. Biblical prayers usually begin with praise. Here's a few examples of that. Moses, for example, began his prayer this way. I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. David began Psalm 100 this way. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Nehemiah began his prayer this way. O God of heaven, that great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of love with those who love and obey his commands. Jesus started the Lord's prayer this way. Our Father in heaven, your name is hallowed. You notice he doesn't begin by saying, hey, God, bless me. Hey, God, do this for me. Hey, God, thank you for doing this for me. It starts with you. It starts with Father. It starts with a concentration upon who God is. Later, they talk about the things God has done, but they start with who God is. Great prayers begin with great praise. Now, if you only have time to do one thing in prayer, make it praise. Our need for prayer is greater than our need for petition. God already knows what you need. He doesn't need to hear it again. He doesn't need to hear you say it. What you, he wants to hear what you think of him. Praise sets us looking to God. You've got to remember, prayer is not just talking to God. Prayer is not just talking to God. It's a necessary exercise of mental focus. Prayer is how we learn to concentrate our thoughts upon God. Now, when we focus upon God, focusing upon three aspects of concentration. And praise helps us to bring these three together. The first one is our intellect. Our minds have to be focused on God. Our will needs to be focused on God. And our creativity and imagination needs to be focused upon God. Now we focus our intellect upon God in many different ways, but here's two good ones. First of all, to study the attributes of God. Look at your Bibles and, and look and see who God is. Study the names of God. The names of God teach us so much about his nature. Uh, Jehovah Jireh, God will provide. Uh, the Lord of hosts, uh, the Lord of, of the Sabbath. All of these great things that God is, the God of love, and of course, Jesus. We need to focus upon the works of God. One of the great ways to get us in the mood for praising God is to just simply go outside in nature and look at the beautiful things that God has created in this world. That helps us to focus our attention upon how mighty and wonderful he is. And of course, study the word of God. Look at the things that God did in history that were recorded for us in the Bible. We focus on God by doing things. First of all, 
first thing we do is withdraw. Avoid distractions that pull you away from God. This is part of praise, to learn to avoid those distractions. Make a choice to think about God. You choose to think about many things, but the thing that we need to do is to make a choice to think about him. And that means turning off the other voices in our head, turn off the radio and the television and the internet, and simply to think about him. And then actively sing, do something to praise God. Singing, praising, bowing the knee, kneeling, dancing, anything else that we do before him helps to focus our attention upon him. And praise God with the body. Praise isn't, not, isn't just something that we do in our minds in stillness. It's something we do that's active. We need to get up and praise him. Lift our hands, bow our heads, prostrate ourselves, jump up and down and dance. Lift our hands over our head. It doesn't really matter which ones you want to do. The real thing that matters is that you get your body involved in praising God. Now, we focus the imagination upon God, too. We do that by getting creative with our praise. Everybody has a creative streak, uh, streak in them. And once we start to use that creativity to praise God, it really adds a, a new dimension to our prayers. And that can mean we can sing songs. We can play music if you're musically inclined. We can write poems. And if you're not musically inclined or or inclined towards poetry, you can always simply just make lists of what of the great things that God has done. Get involved. And then when you do, share your praise with others. That's what church is for, is an opportunity to praise God together in many different ways. Now this week in your quiet time, I want to give you some advice on how you can incorporate praise. Let me suggest to you, first of all, that you do this. In your first quiet times after seeing this video, don't ask God for anything. Confess nothing to God. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't ask God for anything or confess anything throughout the day. I'm just talking about that quiet time that you give to God. That In that one moment, save your confession, save your asking for spot prayers through the day, but focus this attention. Thank God for nothing. You can thank God later. We're going to talk about that next week in, in your devotions. But for this week, simply do this. Just praise him for who he is. Praise, praise alone is sufficient to glorify God.